All right, thanks very much. Um, so yeah, I wanna start as um, everyone else has done by thanking the organizers for organizing this uh, very nice and very complicated conference. I think it worked out really well. I mean, I couldn't attend all of the talks, um, but um, having them on uh, online has been also very useful. Um, so the title of my talk is Borchardt's Algebras and 2D String Theory, and I'm going to just spend the first few minutes giving a very brief overview of um, sort of some motivation and, and very generally what I'm going to talk about today. Um, and before I do that, I just would like to mention my collaborators. Um, so this is based on mostly on um, two previous papers and one work in progress, which should hopefully appear, let's say, in the next month or two, uh, with Natalie Paquette, Daniel Pearson, and Roberto Volpato. So broadly, um, what I'm going to talk about today is a connection between sort of three structures in mathematics and physics. Um, one, which I shortened in the title to Borchardt's algebras, but which are often referred to as Borchardt's Katz-Moody algebras, or BKM, as I'm going to uh, abbreviate in the talk. Uh, they're both uh, a bosonic and a super algebra version of them. And they're, uh, roughly speaking, they're infinite dimensional generalizations of Lie algebras, which were first introduced by Borchardt's um, in his proof of the monstrous moonshine conjectures. Uh, and what sort of uh, generalizes them away from Lie algebras is that the Cartan matrix of the algebra can have uh, imaginary simple roots instead of just real ones. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, essentially how BKM algebras arise in certain very special con contexts in two-dimensional string theory and explicitly um, in special uh, cases of string theory, um, we sh well, I'll discuss how these BKM algebras are related to the spectrum of BPS states. And finally, a third piece of this relation is sort of the number theory side of everything, which is that um, these algebras have a very close connection to the theory of automorphic forms um, via something called the vial denominator formula. Um, which uh, is sort of an infinite product formula, um, which depends on the multiplicities of the roots of the algebra uh, and which reproduces many, um, well, which reproduces many known and, and not so known uh, automorphic forms. Um, and these automorphic forms are also connected to the string theory via um, path integrals, which count certain uh, BPS states in the theory. So um, before I get into more details, I'd like to mention sort of a broad motivation um, for studying these connections. Um, so one is that um, we'd like to understand better what the symmetries and mathematical structures are which underlie string theory, perhaps in at least in some very special examples. And many of the talks this week have been about that. Um, and more particularly, understanding the structure of BPS states uh, over the past several decades has played an important role uh, in understanding the physics of quantum field theory and string dualities, um, connections with mathematics, uh, representation theory, geometry, um, all, all kinds of things that have been discussed in this workshop. And one final piece of motivation, which comes from the fact that the BKM algebras originally arose out of, um, out of the field of moonshine, is to better understand moonshine, which is a connection between uh, finite groups and modular forms. There have been a few talks on uh, moonshine related subjects this week, so I won't spend too much time reviewing it. Um, but sort of one question which comes out of moonshine is what is the role of these um, strange sporadic groups in physics and can we understand some of the special uh, mathematical properties of moonshine uh, physically. Okay, so now I'd like to tell you a bit more about um, what I called Borchardt's algebras or BKM algebras um, in the title of the talk. So. Um, Let's start with this formula, this famous formula satisfied by the J function. 
And this capital J function here um, is a modular, a modular function with the following Fourier expansion. So here in this bottom line, I hope, can everyone see my mouse? Um, yeah, we can. Okay. So here in this bottom line, um, J is uh, written as a Fourier expansion in a variable Q, which is e to the two pi i tau. This is very standard in number theory. Um, and, and its uh, coefficients lead to this following formula, beautiful identity, which it satisfies, uh, which is that if you take an infinite product um, of one minus p to the m, q to the n, and raise it to the power of c m n, where these c's are the coefficients in the Fourier expansion, what you find is that this precisely reproduces j of sigma minus j of tau, where p and q are related to sigma and tau in this way. Um, and as was probably was, I believe was reviewed earlier this week, um, this first coefficient is closely related to the monster group. In fact, it's one plus one nine six eight eight three, the dimension of the smallest irreducible representation of the monster group. Um, and this initial observation led to um, entire uh, field of monstrous moonshine. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about this interpretation of this identity. So what Borchers essentially showed is that this is what's called the denominator formula for an infinite dimensional Lie algebra, which I'll refer to as this curly m, little m. Um, and it's a basically an analog of a very familiar formula, which is for, for regular Lie algebra is known as the Weyl denominator formula, uh, which is a formula which relates a sum to a product where the sum is over um, basically Weyl orbits of, of roots in the algebra. And this is related to a prod, an infinite, uh, well, in, in this case, it's not infinite, uh, just a regular product over uh, positive simple roots. Um, and so what Borchers did is he was he reinterpreted this um, number theoretic formula um, as a similar kind of denominator formula now for a generalization of a Lie algebra. Um, so there is really an algebra uh, stru algebraic structure hidden behind this identity, uh, and this structure is the first example of a Borchers katz moody uh, algebra. Um, and this algebra has a lot of beautiful properties, uh, one of which is that it has a natural action of the monster group. Um, so Borchardt's motivation in introducing this algebra was his proof of the monstrous moonshine conjectures of Conway and Norton. So I feel like it's um, maybe useful to very briefly review um, what, what that is uh, in the talk today, even though maybe it's, it's been uh, done already, um, which uh, sort of mathematically, the statement is the following. There's a vector space, an integer graded vector space, which is uh, often referred to as V natural uh, in the literature. Um, and these V sub n's are uh, integer graded um, such that each, um, uh, each V sub n is a finite dimensional representation of the monster group. And the J function um, coefficients precisely uh, rep are reproduced by traces in, in this module. Uh, and furthermore, to each conjugacy class in the monster group, you can associate a, a different function called a Mackay-Thompson series, uh, which I'll denote as T sub G, uh, which simply uh, is constructed by inserting a group element from the monster group inside the trace and so now the coefficients in the Fourier expansion of the McKay-Thompson series are characters of this group element in the corresponding uh, representation of M. Uh, and what's uh, sort of mathematically special is that the McKay-Thompson series are what are known as HALF modules for certain genus zero subgroups of SL2R. So a HALF module, um, I believe uh, Jeff reviewed this in his talk, is a biholomorphic map from H mod gamma to the Riemann sphere. Um, and 
what uh, gene is zero means is that uh, this H mod gamma has the topology of a sphere rather than um, some higher genus surface. Um, and so Conway and Norton sort of introduced uh, this as a set of conjectures. Uh, and this conjectures were eventually proven um, by Borchards with the, the help of a construction, an explicit construction of this module V natural by Franco Lepowski and Merman. So their construction was that they sort of very familiar to people, uh, to string theorists, in fact, it's essentially a chiral holomorphic uh, conformal field theory of central charge 24. Uh, also known mathematically as a chiral vertex operator algebra. Uh, and it's constructed from a, a Z2 orbifold of chiral bosons on a 24 dimensional torus, which is, uh, has the shape of R24 mod the leech lattice. So this vertex operator algebra precisely furnishes this module V natural, which appears in the monstrous moonshine conjectures. And what Borchards did was he proved that all of these McKay-Thompson series satisfied the genus zero property. And his proof roughly involved constructing a Lie algebra of physical states um, based on a string theory inspired uh, construction, which involved, um, and I'll briefly review sort of how you go through this in, in a few minutes. It involved a BR, BRST reduction of a very specific chiral vertex algebra, which was V, v natural tensored with um, a, a two dimensional lattice vertex operator algebra on R2 mod gamma one comma one, which is a, a lattice of signature one comma one, tensored with some ghost, uh, ghost particles. Um, and after um, constructing such a space of physical states um, from a BRST reduction of this theory, um, he was able to, th this theory has a natural action of the monster group. Um, he constructed the space of physical states, showed it had the structure of a Lie algebra, uh, and then was able to consider um, the action of the monster group on this algebra and prove a family of twisted denominator identities, very similar to the original uh, denominator identity for the J function that I started with. Um, and in proving these identities, you can prove the Haupt module property for these McKay-Thompson series. So, um, oops, yeah, there we go. Um, so that's what I wanted to say briefly about monstrous moonshine. Now I'd like to talk about, again, I'm still um, sort of going through some motivation for the connections that I'm talking about today. So I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some motivation from physics and string theory for studying BKM algebras. So I'll do this by giving two examples of places where BKM algebras appeared in physics starting um, a couple, even a couple decades ago before um, any of sort of the recent stuff about Mathieu Moonshine and New Moonshines that people have talked about today. So um, I'm gonna present two examples. Uh, the first example is considering black holes in a type two string theory on K3 times a two dimensional torus. Uh, there's a formula, a, a very beautiful formula originally written down by Dijkroff, Verlinde and Verlinde um, almost maybe 25-ish years ago for the degeneracies of uh, a quarter VPS black holes in this theory with electric and magnet magnetic charges, capital P and Q. Uh, and this identity involves a contour integral um, over um, well, this genus two uh, Siegel upper half plane, which is parametrized by uh, three complex variables, sigma, tau, and C, um, of essentially the inverse of an automorphic form, which I call phi 10. And phi 10 is known to be the denominator function of a borchardt katz moody superalgebra, as well as a Siegel modular form of weight 10 um, for this, um, genus two Siegel, Siegel modular group SP2Z. 
Um, and there's a proposal by uh, Chang and Verlinde that this algebra governs the physics of a quarter BPS black holes in N equals four string theory, uh, including um, their degeneracies, which you can get from this uh, contour integral formula, as well as um, their well crossing and decay processes. So that's one place in string theory where uh, an automorphic form related to a BKM superalgebra has appeared in the past. Uh, and a second example comes from studying threshold corrections in four another uh, four-dimensional string theory, this time uh, four-dimensional string theory with n equals two supersymmetry, uh, coming from studying the heterotic string on K3 times T2. Um, and in the mid to late 90s, um, these theories and a, you know, a whole family of examples of similar n equals two st string theories were studied. Um, when you compactify string theory uh, on a manifold, you wanna, the first thing you wanna do is study the effective Lagrangian in space time. And uh, certain terms in the Lagrangian, their coupling comes from um, this can be computed from uh, the spectrum of BPS states um, in the internal world sheet theory. Uh, and if you do this uh, in this case and compute the one loop renormalization of the gauge coupling, which again comes from contributions of BPS states uh, in the internal theory, this contains a term which is proportional to log of J of I T minus J of I U, where T and U are complex compactification moduli. Uh, and this thing is precisely the additive side of the denominator formula for the monster Lie algebra, um, which was part of this original identity that I started with. Um, and this computation plus a number of uh, very uh, similar computations in a, a bunch of different theories, uh, n equals two theories in four dimensions, um, which all showed uh, appearance of automorphic forms, uh, which you know looked like um, sort of denominator formulas for BKMs, led uh, partially led Harvey and Moore to make the following proposal which is that um, BPS states in string theory may form an algebra, which is it closely related to a BKM algebra or some generalization of that. So, um, so I think it's, you know, one of our motivations is to explore this proposal and find additional contexts in which BKM algebras may arise in string theory. Um, and be related to uh, sort of the spectra of BPS states, at least in special compactifications. And sort of the final um, more specific piece of motivation I wanna mention is work by um, my other collaborators, uh, which involves a sort of reinterpretation of the results of Borchard's proving monstrous moonshine. So I'm gonna very uh, briefly um, review um, a very nice paper that they wrote, uh, which is sort of, it says a lot of things, but I'm going to sort of pick out a few. Um, it says the following. So if you consider heterotic string theory on an asymmetric orbifold of an eight torus, where the internal world shape theory has the form, uh, it holomorphically factorizes into a left moving part, which is V natural, times a right moving part, which I'll call VF natural, which is a super vertex al operator algebra I'll introduce in a couple slides. That if you do a similar BRST reduction to what Borchards did for a purely chiral theory, so the difference now is that we have a full string theory, the world sheet theory is no longer chiral. Uh, and you look at the space of physical BPS states, you can show that these, uh, which are in two dimensions, uh, these physical BPS states form a module over the monster Lie algebra. Uh, so this leads to a connection between this BKM algebra and the physical BPS states in this very special um, heterotic string con uh, construction. And they also reinterpret the genus zero groups, which appear in monstrous moonshine as T-dual 
two duality groups in a family of closely related models, which are called CHL models, which involve uh, compactifying this 2D theory further on a circle so that it's a, basically a quantum mechanical theory um, and uh, considering orbifolds of that. Um, so I'm not going to say too many more details about that because then I wouldn't be able to get through my own talk, um, but I encourage you to look at uh, the paper or some of their talks to learn more about this. So this leads me to this main question, which is, are there other contexts in string theory where we can construct explicit relations between BKM algebras, BPS states, and dualities? And can give this give us physical insight um, into um, interpretations of, say, new instances of moonshine or further mathematical properties of moonshine, which we don't yet uh, understand, or at least which we don't yet understand physically. So with that, um, I'd like to give an outline for the rest of my talk where I'm going to get into more specific uh, details about our own work. Um, first, I'm going to briefly introduce some new um, examples of BKM superalgebras, which we constructed, uh, and talk about their connection to automorphic forms via their denominator formulas and their, their simple roots. Then I'll talk, I'll sort of switch. So this first part will sort of just be about chiral theories and very similar to Borchard's original construction of the monster Lie algebra. Um, and then I'll talk about um, non chiral theories, so more realistic family of string theory models, uh, where these BKM superalgebras play an important role in, in the connection to their BPS states and end with some conclusions. So um, let me start by uh, introducing um, some vertex operator algebras or chiral CFTs, um, which play an important role in uh, the recent work that we've done in constructing new BKM super algebras. So in this part of the talk, what I'm going to essentially describe for you is how to generalize what Borchards did uh, for the monster Lie algebra, uh, where we replace the role of V natural, um, this monster module, with a super vertex operator algebra now, which has central charge 12. So this is uh, essentially a version of a chiral superstring theory rather than a chiral bosonic string theory. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a vertex super VOA of central charge 12 um, and uh, do a similar construction as Borchardt's to construct a super Borchardt's cat smoothie algebra for those theories. And there are three such theories that we are going to consider with central charge 12. Um, I'm going to call them by the names that people usually use in the literature. So one theory is called, uh, I'll call VFE8, which is just a uh, super VOA based on um, uh, a uh, theory of chiral bosons uh, on an eight dimensional torus, which is R8 mod the E8 lattice, along with eight fermionic superpartners. There's a second theory, which I call VF natural, um, which I'll explain in a moment, and then a theory of just 24 free fermions. So these, uh, these three uh, BOAs of central charge 12, um, they are super symmetric, so they have both fermions and bosons, and so you can give the fermions either uh, integer or half integer grading, and depending on what you choose, um, you have sort of a pair of, of modules for the for the BOA, um, which I'll call the NS sector and the R sector, and I'll denote the R sector with a little subscript called twisted. And both sectors play a role in this construction. So let me tell you a little bit more about these three uh, BOAs of central charge 12. So again, as I said, we're going to start by just 
uh, sort of following Borcher's construction, but replace V natural with one of these three uh, SVOAs. Um, so I told you what this, uh, this VFE8 is. Again, it's a theory of chiral bosons on R8 mod the lead from mod the E8 lattice plus eight fermion superpartners. VF natural is sort of more special. You can construct it in, in a, a couple of different ways, but um, it can be uh, uniquely specified as um, the chiral SVOA of central charge 12 with no fields of conformal weight one half. So you can actually construct it as a Z2 orbifold of either of the other two theories. Uh, but the important point is that it has no uh, fields in the, um, in the NS sector of conformal weight one half. And finally, the third theory is a theory of 24 free chiral fermions, uh, as I mentioned. And in fact, it's a result of uh, Kreutz, Kreutzid, the, Kreuzig, Duncan, and Riedler, that these are uh, sort of the three unique uh, self-dual SVOAs of central charge 12. So these are sort of our, the only options we can possibly consider in doing this construction. And they're closely related to each other by a number of uh, symmetries. So um, uh, each of them has a fair amount of symmetry as a VOA. Uh, and if you gauge the symmetry and uh, do an orbifold, you can move from one to the other in various different ways. So I'll say a little bit more about the symmetry of VF natural because it's the one with the most symmetry and the one that maybe uh, some people in the audience are familiar with because it uh, has a moonshine attached to it. So it has... Um, this uh, SVOA VF natural has a unique choice of N equals one supercurrent inside the VOA. And it turns out that this supercurrent, um, it, well, it was proven by John Duncan that this supercurrent is preserved by the sporadic simple group uh, Conway one. Uh, so if you compute the supertrace uh, in this uh, module of uh, Q to the L naught minus C over 24. So essentially the character with a uh, plus sign, uh, if it's a bosonic state and minus sign, if it's a fermionic state, you get the following um, Fourier uh, expansion. Um, this is an automorphic, uh, for, this is, well, this is a modular function for a congruent subgroup of uh, SL2Z. And the coefficients in this expansion are representations of this Conway group in a very analogous uh, sense uh, to how the coefficients in the J function are representations of the monster group. And there's a whole, um, uh, a whole structure here of, um, of McKay-Thompson series uh, associated to each conjugacy class in the Conway group, uh, which leads to moonshine for this theory. Um, so, okay, this is a bit of a technical point. Maybe just ignore this if you're not already familiar with it, but there's also a closely related um, SVOA called VS natural. And both of these are discussed in the literature in, in different papers, um, which also uh, in, uh, uh, has an N equals one supercurrent now in the Ramon sector instead of the NS sector. Um, which is preserved by a some slightly larger group, the Con group Conway zero, which is the automorphism group of the Leech lattice. So um, as I said, these VF natural and VS natural are very naturally considered the sort of supersymmetric analog of V natural, the monster uh, CFT. Um, and furthermore, um, there's a corresponding version of the genus zero property for the McKay-Thompson series of this VS natural. So this uh, VS natural is a, a, a half, integer, half integer graded um, super VOA. Um, and so if we um, define these uh, spaces, uh, Vs natural sub n over two as these uh, half integer graded subspaces in this module, 
uh, we can define the McKay-Thompson series for the theory in the following way. Um, I'll put a little sup superscript S uh, to indicate we're now in this uh, VS natural theory. Um, and if we take any element of the group Conway zero G and insert it in the supertrace, then this TGS um, is some uh, modular function for a um, for a genus zero subgroup of SL2R. In fact, you have to do a slight rescaling of tau um, to to normalize it such that uh, it's the help it's the help module for such a group, uh, and that just essentially converts you from a uh, a Fourier expansion which is half integrated to one which is integer grade. But uh, besides that fact, um, these family of functions attached to conjugacy classes in the group Conway zero all obey a sim very similar genus zero property to that of monstrous moonshine. So this is something that was proven in work by uh, Duncan and Matt Crane. So um, this leads to a natural question, um, which is that, is there uh, a super fortress cat smoothie algebra attached um, to sort of derived from this uh, super VOA? that has an action of the Conway group. Uh, and can this lead us to a sort of a physical explanation for the genus zero property of Conway moonshine, which is similar to the one proposed for the genus zero property of monstrous moonshine uh, using um, a, this string theoretic construction uh, that I discussed earlier. Okay, so um, I want to talk about one other example. Let me just remind you of what's going on here. So we have three sort of super VOAs of central charge 12. I told you a bit about this one, which is related to the Conway group. I'll tell you a, a very brief little bit about F24 as well. Um, I just passed it. So F24 is just a theory of 24 free fermions. Um, and it also uh, is an SVOA. It admits an N equals one superconformal algebra. And in fact, it admits eight distinct superconformal structures up to isomorphism, which are simply constructed by taking a linear combination of, uh, well, if lambda um, sub i from i equals one to 24 is one of the 24 fermions, uh, then if you take linear combinations of products of three fermions, uh, if you take the right linear combination, then you get uh, the proper uh, superconformal algebra along with the uh, right OPEs. Um, and there are eight sort of distinct uh, possible linear combinations uh, up to isomorphism that lead to uh, a n equals one supercurrent in this theory. And they're classified by uh, some uh, coefficients Cijk, uh, which turn out to be structure constants of semi-simple Lie algebras of dimension 24. And there are eight possible choices of uh, such a semi-simple Lie algebra, which determines the uh, n equals one superconformal current. So the um, these given uh, such uh, a choice you can, uh, well, there also exists an affine Casmudi algebra based on this uh, semi-simple Lie algebra coming from the superconformal descendants of the 24 fermions. And these are the eight different choices. So this was classified uh, quite a while ago by Goddard and all of uh, so, um, so these are sort of eight affine Casmudi algebras uh, which depend on your choice of superconformal structure in this uh, chiral theory of 24 free fermions. Um, and each, each superconformal structure will lead to a distinct uh, BKM superalgebra, which contains this corresponding affine katz moody algebra as a subalgebra. So, 
Um, so the main point of discussing all this was to, to generalize Borchardt's construction and, and discover new uh, BKM super algebras based on these chiral theories. So there's a, um, a very natural analog of Borchardt's construction and a corresponding super BKM algebra derived from world sheet theories based on any of these three SVOAs that I mentioned. So um, the first one um, was actually done by Tower a while ago, uh, which involved uh, doing a sort of uh, generalization of Borchardt's construction for a chiral superstring on um, an eight torus, which is R8 mod um, the E8 lattice. Uh, this precisely reproduces a world sheet theory of the, which is this SVOA VFE8. Um, you can do a similar thing where the world sheet theory is chiral and given by VF natural or VS natural. Uh, and the algebra um, of physical states uh, in space time also um, is a super BKM algebra. That is work that I did with. Um, Paquette and Volpato. Uh, and finally, you can do this for F24 and you find that there are eight distinct BKM algebras based on your choice of N equals one supercurrent um, that I mentioned on the previous slide. So um, all of these, doing all sort of three of these constructions, can they all follow the same logic? So I'm gonna very briefly sketch the construction of these algebras following the logic of Borchardt's um, over the next couple of slides. So um, the general construction goes as follows. You start with a, um, one of these VOAs um, with central charge 12, and you construct a, the following world sheet theory, um, which is, again, it's chiral. Um, it has a matter part and a ghost part. So I'll call the full chiral world sheet theory V total. It has um, a central charge 15 matter sector and a central charge minus 15 ghost sector. Uh, and the ghost part is a familiar BC beta gamma system that you can read about in say, Polchinski's uh, string theory book. And the matter part has uh, two components. There's an internal part, which is one of the C equals 12 SVOAs I've been discussing for so long. And uh, there's also a part, which is a lattice SVOA based on a, a lattice of signature one comma one. So this is the NS sector of the world G theory. And again, we're dealing with a supersymmetric theory. So there's also an R sector, um, which has a similar decomposition. Um, but now, uh, instead of um, the fermions being half integer graded, they're integer graded. And then this is the following logic um, that you use to construct a space of physical states in, in space time. Uh, this kind of logic is described very nicely as well in Polchinski's string theory book. You start uh, with your internal world sheet theory. You do a GSO projection, which is familiar to string theorists. Um, it only contains two components because we have a chiral world sheet theory. So you take, say, um, even part of NS plus even part of R sector. And then you restrict to a subspace of this GSO projected Hilbert space, um, which is uh, in the kernel of, um, of the L naught operator and B naught, um, which is one of the ghost fields. Um, and this subspace has some, some tr triple grading by momenta in the gamma one one lattice, as well as quantum numbers known as ghost number and picture numbers. Um, next, you construct a nilpotent supercharge uh, called a BRST charge in terms of the uh, superconformal generators as well as the ghost fields in this way. Uh, and this, um, this BRST charge um, you know, takes you between these, uh, these subspaces, these triply graded subspaces. Um, and so from this, you, you can define cohomology spaces. And then from these cohomology spaces, you construct the space of physical states. 
Um, and this, again, this has a grading by momenta and some lattice and you restrict to um, certain ghost and picture quantum numbers um, in this way as, as listed in this formula. And that's how you get your Hilbert space of physical states. Um, and using the, the no ghost theorem in string theory, you can show that these Hilbert spaces are um, isomorphic to certain uh, subspaces in the original internal SVOA that you started out with. So the, in particular, the degeneracies of states in these Hilbert spaces are precisely given by certain Fourier coefficients in the um, character of the original SVOA that you started out with. Um, and um, so here I've shown it at non-zero momentum, but you can get a similar result for zero momentum, but you have to sort of analyze that uh, case by case. Um, and this space has this, the important point is that this physical Hilbert space has the structure of a Lie superalgebra G, uh, where there's, uh, it's a superalgebra because there's an even part and an odd part, uh, where the even part is this cohomology space H1 minus one of K, and the odd part is this H1 minus one half of K. Um, so this is sort of how you show that the, the physical states of this chiral string theory have the structure of a Lie superalgebra. But um, furthermore, you can prove that this uh, Lie superalgebra actually has the structure of a BKM superalgebra. Uh, and you can do this for each of the three starting C equals 12 internal SVOAs separately. Uh, so this was done by uh, different people for each case. As I said, Scheithauer did it for VFE8, and I did it with um, our various collaborators for the other two. Um, and essentially the method is to verify that a certain list of properties characterizing um, BKM algebras holds. Uh, so I'm, I won't go through this because I believe this is too much technical detail, but I'll just show you, and again, very quickly, that there is a list of such properties, uh, mathematically well-defined, which uh, you can verify. Um, so I'll just point out a few, you know, that this, this Lie algebra has a decomposition into even and odd parts with some standard um, triangular decomposition and, and generator satisfying relations, um, a constraint on this, on a bilinear form, um, a set of roots, which are even or odd and positive or negative, though they can be uh, imaginary. Um, a generalized Cartan matrix and a denominator identity, which relates an infinite product over positive roots to a sum over simple roots. And this last point is the point that I'm going to want to focus on um, now. So if you have a BKM superalgebra, which decomposes in this way into the sum of even and odd components, you can construct a, a very be beautiful um, automorphic form, which satisfies uh, a very nice identity, uh, which relates an infinite product to an infinite sum. So in order to do this, you need to know the multiplicities of the even and odd roots in your algebra. Um, and so I denote the multiplicities of even roots with a zero subscript and the odd roots with a one. And uh, basically if you write down, uh, you also need to know what are the um, um, vial group and um, sort of a decomposition of the roots uh, into simple roots as well. Um, and if you do this and you write down the following formula, you find an identity, which is a uh, generalization of the vial denominator formula for Lie algebras. Um, and there's a, because we're dealing with super BKMs, um, we have a choice of whether we um, sort of insert a plus or a minus sign um, into this uh, into this product formula, which gives us a something called a denominator if it's along the top line and a super denominator along the bottom line. Um, and 
it turns out that these, these functions, these infinite products are very beautiful uh, automorphic forms. So I'll just show you an example of what they look like for um, certain of the BKMs that I mentioned. So if we start with the one based on the Conway uh, vertex operator algebra, um, this BKM has a rank two Cartan subalgebra with roots, which are labeled um, by vectors in gamma one comma one. Um, and it has a family of positive roots of the form D comma R where D is greater than zero and a family of simple roots of uh, this fo following form. Uh, and if you plug that into the formula on the previous page, you can construct both the denominator and super denominator function um, and it takes the following form. These are the, the root spaces in the exponents, which also happen to be the coefficients in the Fourier expansion of the character of the Conway uh, module, which I showed uh, in the very beginning of the talk. Um, so the denominator function is this sum, sum of eta, eta quotients um, eta um, to the 24th of sigma over eta to the 24th of two sigma is uh, again coming from this p where p is e to the two pi i sigma and tau q is e to the two pi i tau. So this is some weight uh, zero um, automorphic form. And the super denominator, well, this, uh, this is the thing with all the minus signs in the denominator. So most terms cancel and you actually just get one over eta to the 24th. Um, so because I'm running short on time, I'm going to skip the F24 example, but it works very similarly. Um, you get a um, similar uh, denominator formula where coefficients arise, uh, well, where the, the, the terms in the exponent arise from coefficients in some Fourier expansion of a modular form. Um, so, sorry, yeah. Question. So, so you suggested Oops. before that uh, that uh, diff three different algebras, like uh, one coming from F24 and then yeah. coming from EH, et cetera, are related by some gauging procedure. So, uh, but it, but nevertheless, uh, it, it, is it possible to take advantage of that and try to reduce the work, or do you still have to analyze separately somehow? And uh, um, well, yeah, there. I, I'm not sure how um, easy it is to reduce the work if you want to find like the simple roots uh, and things like this. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have to do that sort of case by case. Um, but in terms of constructing this, the algebra, it's all very similar, um, like uh -huh. the BRST construction. So th in that sense, you don't really need to do anything new. But if you want to like write down um, the denominator formula, it, I'm not sure how easy it is to take advantage of that. I see. Okay, thank yeah. you. So in the remaining part of my talk, I want to briefly discuss um, how these algebras arise in full string theory constructions. So the idea is we'd like to explore the role of BKM algebras in more realistic string constructions, where by realistic, I just mean that the world sheet theory is no longer chiral. It has a holomorphic and an anti-holomorphic sector. Um, so there are many different models we can consider now that we allow this. Um, we're going to take the anti-holomorphic sector W to be one of these three C equals 12 SVOAs that I've been discussing throughout the talk. And for the, the holomorphic part, we'll take it to either, again, be one of these three C equals 12 theories. So that will lead to a type two construction or a holomorphic C equals 24 bosonic VOA, which will lead to a heterotic construction. So let me present a table of sort of the different theories we can consider um, and their massless spectra in space time. So there's a family of type two models you can consider by combining all possible um, combinations of left and right moving uh, SVOAs of central charge 12. Uh, and you get a, a variety of two dimensional type two compactifications, which have differing amounts of uh, supersymmetry depending on your choice of internal theory. Um, and here I've listed the mass spectrum in each uh, of the, the sectors, uh, NS and R. 
And then in the heterotic theories, um, you can consider any uh, holomorphic C equals 24 VOA. It's conjectured that there are in fact 71 of them by Shellikins, and I believe that has is very close or has already been proven. Uh, and on the right, you can take any of these three uh, C equals 12 SVOA. Uh, and again, uh, the mass slick spectrum, it now depends on the number of currents your homomorphic VOA has. So I'll call that capital N. And the supersymmetry is as follows. So for the rest of the talk, I'm going to briefly discuss um, some aspects of these full string constructions, which is will um, be appear in a paper this summer with uh, these three collaborators. So the first thing you'd like to ask are what are the physical BPS states in space time? And I'm not gonna go through the logic, but you basically do the same thing. You do a very similar BRST redu reduction of the world sheet theory to what I discussed for the chiral case, but now you have holomorphic and anti-holomorphic sectors and you get a Hilbert space of uh, space time physical BPS states. It now has um, uh, grading by left and right moving momenta. Um, and so it, it has a, a space H and space H bar for both left and right momenta. And, and that's at non-zero momentum. Uh, and plus an additional piece coming from cohomology at zero momentum, which doesn't factorize in this nice way. So these arise essentially from a BRST reduction with respect to a nilpotent supercharge, which is just the uh, sum of the left and right moving BRST supercharges. Uh, now, in order to construct this uh, physical BPS uh, Hilbert space, um, I've already further compactified the space time on a circle of radius R, uh, which leads to this following BPS condition appearing in the second line of the sum which is just that um, this, the states must be annihilated by a right moving supercharge, which sets the zero and one component of the right moving momentum to be equal to each other. Um, and you can expand the values of these momenta in terms of momenta and winding uh, integers, which parameterize the momenta and winding modes um, around the, the circle, the space time circle, which we're on um, in the following way. So that specifies the BPS states in the theory. And what we prove um, is the paper is that there's an action of a BKM algebra on this uh, subspace of BPS states in the space of physical states. Uh, and this is similar to what was proven for one uh, specific uh, case of these compactifications, which was V natural times VF natural bar. Now we prove it for this whole uh, family of different type both type two and heterotic compactifications. And so now that we know that the physical uh, BPS states in space time uh, are uh, form a uh, representation of this, these various BKM algebras, we can make further connections to properties of BKM algebras uh, in various ways. So I'm just gonna tell you about one way, which is that if we, compute a supersymmetric index in the space-time theory on this circle, um, then you can reproduce the denominator formula of the algebra. So um, the computation is as follows. So we're in a two-dimensional string theory. We've compactified space on a circle of radius capital R. And now we're going to compactify um, time. Well, we're going to transform to Euclidean time and compactify um, that as well on a circle uh, of radius one over beta. And we're gonna define the following supersymmetric index in terms of um, the Hamiltonian momentum and winding, um, as well as an insertion of a minus one to the F operator, uh, which will uh, basically means that only BPS states will contribute to the index and potentially some charges, uh, you know, some, um, chemical potentials for uh, charges with respect to a space-time gauge group if there is one. So this depends on what theory you're considering, uh, whether or not you have additional chemical potentials that you could include. 
So the Hamiltonian is, um, in terms of momentum unwinding, takes this very simpler, simple form. Um, and if you compute this index, well, before you compute this index, it's convenient to redefine certain of the parameters. Um, so the momentum winding um, uh, temperature and radius can be combined very nicely into two complex parameters, which I'll call capital T and U. And these parameterize the Kähler uh, in complex structures of the space-time torus. So um, writing, rewriting this index in terms of capital uh, T and U um, uh, allows us to express it in the following form as essentially just a trace over BPS states of P to the winding, Q to the momentum, minus one to the F and whatever additional chemical potentials you might wanna consider. So now in this context, P and Q are related to these moduli uh, by e to the 2 pi i t or e to the 2 pi i u. So the main point is that this index is a sign count of space-time BPS states, uh, which should be closely related to the denominator or super denominator function um, of the BKM algebra associated to the left moving um, part of the world sheet theory. And if you do this in example, um, then uh, you get the following things. I think I'm gonna just do example two because I only have a few minutes left. Um, so let's consider the left times the right moving part to be VF natural times VF natural bar. So this is a type two compactification. Um, and if you compute the index, um, it depends on um, it depends on a slight subtlety of whether you assign the twenty four Ramon ground states of weight a half to have a plus or a minus fermion number. So there are two different cases you consider. Uh, if you assign them a plus fermion number, it turns out the space time BPS states only carry momentum and no winding, whereas if you assign a minus sign, they only can carry winding and no momentum. So you make one of these two choices and you get one of the two results, uh, which is that the index is precisely one over a to the 24th of t. Uh, if you've given them mo momentum, the BPS states are momentum states. And if they're winding states, it's one over a to the 24th u, all raised to the 24th power. And this is precisely the 24th power of the product side of the super denominator formula for the Conway BKM, which I presented a few slides ago. So if you remember the super denominator formula for this BKM was one over e to the 24th. Um, and this is precisely reproducing that. We have a 24th power just coming from uh, 24, um, 24 Ramon ground states in VF natural bar. Um, and you can also compute a mo modified index, um, which will give you the denominator formula instead of the super denominator formula. So this modified index and it, it essentially uh, um, arises when you replace the minus one to the F in the trace of your index with just a minus one to the F right. So you can reproduce both the super denominator and denominator formulas of the Conway um, BKM algebra from this uh, special string construction uh, by computing this super space-time supersymmetric index. So um, in the last, uh, I think I have about two minutes left, I'd like to um, summarize and briefly conclude um, what I've told you today. So um, first I uh, basically explained how you can construct new examples of super BKM algebras um, uh, via a very similar method to one Borchardt's originally used, using a, a methods very familiar to string theorists, essentially a, a BRST reduction of a, of a world sheet string theory. And then I, I sketched for you how these algebras may arise in two-dimensional string compactifications where the world sheet theory holomorphically factorizes into a product of two of these special theories I've been considering uh, in the talk. And in this upcoming work, we show um, more in more detail sort of four properties of these 2D string theories. 
One that I mentioned already is that the space-time BPS states furnish a representation of G, where G is the BKM associated to V left. That G, I didn't talk about this, but we also show that G acts as a symmetry of certain BPS um, correlation functions um, that a suitably defined space-time supersymmetric index uh, reproduces the denominator or superdenominator formulas of G. You can also show it's uh, an automorphic form. And then a, a fourth point, which I also didn't talk about um, because of time, which is that you can compute this path and uh, this index uh, using a path integral. And this reduces to a familiar uh, theta lift. This theta lift appeared in, in Jeff's talk as well uh, from number theory. So there's a, a second way to compute this index uh, using this uh, technology of theta lifts. So we hope that such systems that I've described today will be useful for exploring and understanding the role of BKM algebras or BPS algebras in string theory. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, um, and Masahito also asked about, um, we these uh, SVOAs that we start out are, out with are very closely related via orbifolds and and um, symmetries, uh, uh, and we expect that these different algebras may have surprising relations to each other in these full string theory models by considering the action of dualities uh, in string theory, which should descend from the close relations at the level of the SVOAs. Um, and a couple open questions. One is that you, it's a very natural question to study what are called CHS or CHL orbifolds of these theories. As I mentioned, if you do this um, for the specific theory of V natural times V bar F natural, this allows one to um, make a connection between monstrous moonshine and, and uh, T duality symmetries of. Uh, of the string theory, as well as the genus zero property, which arises in monstrous moonshine. And so a natural question is what we can learn from studying CHL orbifolds of these more general models. And if uh, we can understand in particular the genus zero property of Conway moonshine in a similar way. So I don't answer this question at all, but it's kind of a natural question to consider. And then sort of more uh, less specifically, um, it's interesting to study the appearance of BKM algebras in higher dimensions, and you could go about this a number of ways. For example, how uh, our models behave under decompactification um, and um, whether we can find similar instances of BKM algebras uh, in higher dimensional string compactifications as well as uh, understanding how these connect with automorphic forms, geometry, and the observations about black holes and threshold corrections I mentioned in the intro as motivation. And finally, uh, even more speculative observation is uh, a question of whether any of these models have a relation to Mathieu Moonshine or K3 string theory. Um, so one, well, there are two sort of observations which are intriguing. One is that there's a close relation of this VS natural VOA to K3 sigma models, um, which was pointed out by Duncan and Matt Crane. Um, and uh, well, I won't say too many details, but they have a very precise way to reproduce many McKay Thompson series of Mutu Moonshine using this SVOA. Um, and the second point is that the super denominator of this Conway VOA is precisely 1 over a the 24th, which is known to be uh, related to the geometry of K3 surfaces. Um, this tells you the generating function of Euler characteristics of the symmetric product of K3, as well as the spectrum of half BPS states of N equals 4 string theory on K3 times T2. So this function is, is been closely related to K3 before. Uh, that's sort of an amusing observation, but I don't have much more to say about that. Um, one idea is that there could be a duality frame in which the physical appearance of the Conway BKM algebra involves a compactification on K3. Um, 
but I will not answer these questions today. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, sorry for going over a bit, but thank you very much for listening to my talk. Thank Tara for the fantastic talk again. Um, are there any questions, Sarah? Oh, okay, then I have a question. So, uh, so Greg and Jeff had a paper about this uh, error corrections where they, 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 they try to, uh, so I think there is a construction of supercurrent and the choice of the supercurrent in the vertex algebra, I'm oh, sorry, vertex operator was related with the code, I mean, choice of the code in the whole subspace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so th does that type of argument apply to your chiral DOAs uh, you were describing? It, it um, yeah, they were, they were talking about a specific, well, for most of their paper, they were talking about a specific um, right. torus orbifold model of K3, but actually they do discuss, um, <laughs> sorry, I don't know where the best place to point it out is. Um, they do discuss um, how it works for VF natural in that in a oh, intersection of that I, paper. I, I uh -huh. um, but I think, um, it's an interesting question. So these two uh, on the left and the right uh, also have n equals one supercurrents uh, that you can write down very explicitly. Um, you know, because this one's a free theory and this one is just a, a lattice BOA. Um, maybe, well, Je I see Jeff's here. So maybe he's thought about this, but I, I don't know if they have relations to codes uh, as well. Um, I see. So for, for example, yeah. if there are cores, there are, I, I imagine, automorphism of the code and, and the, but that's, that's different from VKM algebras or? Um, yeah, I don't, well, I don't know how the, the, oh, the yeah. stabilizer code is at all related to that, um, but maybe Jeff knows if there is any. Uh, no, I, uh, let's see, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, no, I think it's an interesting open question. Um, oh, there are yeah. there are lots of interesting n equals one theories that have you know these uh, various kinds of interesting symmetries, and uh, we kind of ran out of energy in that paper <laughs> in in analyzing a few specific examples. But I think uh, the question of how broadly there's a connection between uh, quantum error correcting codes and superconformal symmetry is really interesting, and this would be a interesting class of theories to investigate. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, I think it's a great question because I heard Jeff give a very beautiful talk about it two weeks ago, I'm not sure, but I was thinking about the same thing, whether any of these other theories uh, have a very nice relation to these codes, but. I see, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's exciting. Any more questions for Sarah? Okay, if not, I've got one. The, um, yeah. the, the, the big use of cusp form where you mentioned that that's got a particular denominator formula which you can associate to a BKM algebra. I'm assuming there's also a BKM algebra when you do an arbor fold of the use of cusp form. So let's say you take phi six or something. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah, I think, um... Who did that? Um, I think Mar Miranda and <laughs> uh, DeVolgar maybe had comments about this. I don't know if Miranda is still here, but um, you're talking about. Yeah, oh yeah, that one, the. Very beginning. Oh, I'm, I skipped it. Yeah. You're that... talking about this. You're saying that there are CHL models where this degeneracy formula is replaced with a different automorphic form. Yeah, um, I think it's related to 24 minus something. Yeah, it's basically if you do like a Z2 arbor it's only phi six. And yeah, yeah if, so. in the internal theory, it's something like that. Um, mm. But actually, okay. So Miranda is here if you're still looking for me. Oh, <laughs> so there are two choice. Th there are two things like the orbifold you're considering. I think might um, be like like a twining genus. I think to get a new BKM, you would have to consider what's called a twisted 
genus, which is more like generalized moonshine. And right. uh, that corresponds to a CHL orbital of K3 times T2, which involves twisting in the K3 CFT and some shift on the T2. Yeah. And, and I, Miranda knows better than me, but I know some people have, ident I think Miranda with collaborators have identified uh, BKM algebras for some cases, but couldn't for some others. Uh, yeah, that's right. With Atish, we had paper identifying like all the cases where you can identify a BKM in a very completely analogous way. I see. And th does something hold also for the case of non-prime orbifolds? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, so I don't remember what cases you can do and not. There's Z for like Suresh Govind Rajan and uh, somebody else had done had shown how to construct non-prime orbifolds. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, uh, and the actual question I want to come to was now in the, at the very end of your talk. I'm sorry, I have to make you like go back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the um, the part where you, uh, so one of eta theta 24, that's the one that the super denominator for the Conway group. This thing. Um, yeah, that's right. I think also in the very last slide, you made a comment. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. that one right there. So one of eta theta 24, that's the super denominator for Conway BKM. And you can kind of, sh it's known that this one of eta tau to 24 is precisely the, you, you need two products of one of eta tau to 24 to see the entire Iguisacasa form. Uh -huh. So I had a paper right. there and then also I think uh, Suresh and Gabriel and uh, Marty, they had a nicer paper, not nicer, but a, better, a nicer construction in terms of uh, continuous fractions to actually derive the, um, or show that one of eta tau to 24 times one of eta tau 24 can somehow give you the right construction of the Igus cusp form. So I was wondering whether there's a relation between something analogous to taking the super denominators for Conway and constructing the actual, the, the other BKM algebra associated with the one over phi 10. Yeah, the, I'm, <laughs> yeah I, I'm not sure. That's a good question. This comment is really, I mean, I'm not sure, like one over eight to the 24 is such a like canonical <laughs> modular yeah. function that I'm not sure there's much in this comment, but mm -hmm. I, I just put it in because it's kind of amusing. Um, but I think it is in general, a good question is if there's a relation between the Conway BKM and Phi 10. Mm -hmm. And perhaps there could be given my first comment, which is, um, well, it's quite technical if you're not already familiar with this result, but just that essentially this Conway VOA, you can kind of soup it up to reproduce such that the trace reproduces the elliptic genus of K3. Now the Conway VOA leads to the Conway BKM, the K3 EG leads to phi 10. So maybe those two are related. Those two are related somehow at the BKM level, but I don't okay. really know the answer of how to do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, are there any more questions for Sarah? Uh, I have a question about this uh, two-dimensional uh, string theory. Yeah. When you get some very highly supersymmetric two-dimensional yeah, yeah. system. Right. And this, the last computation is like a Witten index. Yeah, it's like a it's like a, a elliptic genus sort of. Uh, yeah, and, and in one of this yeah. result, it depends on the Kela parameter. Mm -hmm. That's right. Isn't, isn't it strange? Um, well, it's it's more the Kela par parameter of the space time torus. That's so right. That's right. That's the torus you're compactifying on. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks very strange, no? Um, it's just because the it's because the BPS states are only wind, winding states. It's, uh -huh. um, so in, in this specific example, um, the the spectrum of BPS states you get in space time, it depends on how you assign your fermion number to in the internal theory, and um, they're basically there are twenty four Ramond ground states in this in this internal theory. 
Um, and you have a choice, because they're ground states, you essentially have a choice of how you want to assign is the fermion number, uh, whether you want to give them a plus or a minus sign. Um, and, and whether you make, how you make that choice tells you whether the BPS states are only momentum modes or only winding modes. And it's kind of weird, but if you have the only winding modes, then yes, you only get the dependence on the Kähler perimeter instead of the complex structure. Uh -huh. This uh -huh. looks surprising. Mm -hmm. I see. Anyway, that's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And you said you can do the path interval. So you must know yeah. uh, fields and Lagrangians. Uh, that's what you. Um, yeah, let me see if I have a slide on it. Um, no, I deleted it from this talk. Yeah, uh, just, uh, just from, um, I, you just really need to know the sort of, uh, um, the the spectrum of bps states uh, and of the uh internal theory and you integrate over the fundamental domain um oh. and that you can show is essentially equivalent to doing a path integral um but it's also this um this sort of theta lift procedure uh which i referred to mm -hmm. So, so it's not like a usual localization computation. Yeah, let me, um, I have another <laughs> talk um, where I have uh, a slide on it. Um, so um, uh, on this slide from a different talk, this is what I mean by computing a path integral. You have, um, your um, your world sheet theory. You have a basically a partition function in the world sheet theory, which you integrate over the fundamental domain, uh, and you take the exponential of that. Um, and this is um, reduces to this kind of um, this kind of integration of a automorphic form. Uh, against a, a siegel norain theta function, which is a theta lift of the type that was in Jeff's talk. And this is what I mean by um, computing a path integral. Um, and you get essentially the, can reproduce the same uh, index, which gives you the denominator formula. Wow. So uh, here is the result for this same theory I was mentioning before. Um, you um, you compute this for VF natural times VF natural bar, uh, and you get uh, something which matches this denominator formula. Again, the two cases for Kähler complex structure are um, appearing again. Oh, yeah. I see. That's what you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, so with that, um, let's thank Sarah again for the fantastic talk. And uh, with that, I, let me also thank all the speakers for excellent talks in this workshop and all the participants for coming to a large fraction of the talks, even though it was inconvenient for them in the different time zones, and also all the chairpersons, Hiraku, Scott, Misha, Hiroshi, Samir, and Kentaro for taking time out of their schedules. So it was a very fun experience for us, and we also hope it was a great experience for you. Um, oh, we're still recording, Masahito. Um,